everyone, my name is Cassidy and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple website using a bootstrap theme and putting it up on GitHub pages, so stick around. So the first thing we're going to do is download Visual Studio Code. They have it available for Windows, Linux, and Mac operating systems. So go ahead and click the one that will run on your computer and follow the instructions to install it. So Bootstrap is a CSS framework that allows you to design responsive websites really quickly and easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a theme over on startbootstrap.com slash themes and that way we already have the layout and basic styling in place ready to go. For this tutorial I'm going to be using this business casual theme. So if you find a theme that you want to look at more, you can click the view live preview button and see how it would actually look on your website. With this template, we already have a home page, an about page, there's also a products page. And finally, a store page that lets you list the days that you're open and some basic contact info. So we're going to go ahead and click the free download button in the top right and it's going to download a zip file with all of our files that we're going to be using. Go ahead and extract your zip file and you'll see all of the files and folders within it. And that's what we're going to open in VS Code. So this is what you see when you first open Visual Studio Code. We're going to go ahead and click File, Open, and then we're going to open that folder that we just looked at. All right, so now on the left, we can see all of our files right there, ready to go in the project. And we're gonna start by looking at the index.html file. This is the code for the home page of the website. And if you know how to code, you can customize any of this that you want. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm just gonna show you what you would need to customize the page for your business or your website. So here's the store.html page. Over here we have our styling, so that's going to be in the SCSS folder, all of our style files. So we want to make sure that we can view our edits in real time in the browser. So go to the top, click Terminal, New Terminal, and we're going to type a couple commands into the terminal. So we're going to start with npm install. Once you've typed that in, go ahead and hit enter and let it do its thing. It might take a little bit of time. After it's installed, if it's giving you any errors, go ahead and type npm audit fix into the terminal, hit enter again and let it fix any errors that it can. So once that's done, type npm start into the terminal, hit enter again and now your website should open up in the browser and any changes that you make will be shown here as well. Now we're going to change all of the images on the site. So on the left in our image folder, these are all of the pictures that are currently on the website and we're going to go ahead and replace those to change the website from a coffee business to a clothing business. So over here, I've already saved some pictures that we're gonna use and I just copied those and pasted them right into that image folder. So 
So when you go back to the project, you can see that they're all there and ready to go. The first image that we're going to replace is this picture on the home page. So go back to VS Code and we're going to find the home page file, which is our index.html file. And we're going to scroll down until we find an IMG tag. That's where our image is currently living and we're just going to replace the file that it's pointing to. Some options will pop up when you start typing of files in that folder, so you can go ahead and choose one. Make sure to save and then go back to the website and you should see your new picture. We're going to do the exact same thing on the about page. So we want to find a picture that kind of has the same dimensions as the one that's already there. So basically you would want one that's a lot wider than it is tall. So we're going to scroll down again until we find that image tag. And then where it says source, we're going to change the file name again. Make sure to save. You can do that by hitting Command S on a Mac or Control S on a Windows computer. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly replace all the other images on the site and then we can move on. Right now we're going to edit the background image of the site. Right now it's a bunch of coffee beans. So I've gone ahead and saved an image that I would rather use. And we're going to go over to one of our style files, the global.scss file. So this is a file that contains styling that's used on the entire site. Right at the top, we're going to change the file to that new background image that we saved. Now we can see that it's changed, but it's still not quite what we want, and that's because there is something called a linear gradient over it. So we're going to go ahead and change that color to something a little brighter. When you click the color value, it'll give you a little color picker that you can slide around and mess with until you find a color that you like. So I'm going to go ahead and pick kind of a lighter pink color. And we can see that the top has changed, but there's two RGB values, so we need to change the other one to match it. Now when we go back and look at it, we have a nice bright background that better matches the aesthetics that we're going for. So we have our images and we have our background color for the website, but we need to change the color scheme to better match that. So if we go to our variables.scss file, we see some color variables that we're going to change. The main ones that we want to change are the primary and secondary colors. Right now they're in orange and a brown color, so go ahead and think of two colors that you would rather have and you can look up the hex code values for those. I've gone ahead and changed the colors to kind of a corally pink and a blue just so you can see the difference that it makes. And right there you can see the two values that I chose. Now we've got the look of the site down, but we want to edit the actual content and text that are on the pages. So let's go to our index.html file, and right here in this h1 tag, which is the main heading of the page, we're going to go ahead and just change that text. Just type into it like you normally would. So we can see that change right there at the top and then this paragraph that's right on the front I'm going to go ahead and quickly change some of the content in that just so you can see it one more time.
If there's a particularly long line of text, you can just backspace all of that and then type whatever you want. Or you can copy paste text from a text document or a Word document if you've already typed something up. Right down here, we have an A tag and this is a link. So in this href variable, right now we have a pound sign or a hashtag, whatever you wanna call it. And if you wanna add a website there, you just type it right in between those quotation marks. So just as an example, I put in the URL for the Google website. And now if we click that button right up there, it'll take us right to that page. On the store page, the text looks a little bit different and that's because it's in a table. So if we go to our store.html file, we can see how that's laid out. Just scroll until you find the days and times that are listed in the table. And just like before, go ahead and type into it what you want it to be. We're going to go ahead and change some of that contact info as well because that's something that you would most likely want to change. So scroll down past the table and you can see where it has the address and phone number. Go ahead and make a GitHub account if you don't already have one. Click the plus sign in the top right to make a new repository and go ahead and name it whatever you would like. You can go ahead and leave all of the settings the same since we're using a theme it already has a readme file. Go ahead and click the create repository button and then you're ready to start adding your files. From this screen, click the upload an existing file and then it gives you the option to either choose files from your file system or drag and drop. So on the right are all of my files that I would like to upload. These are the files that we initially extracted and the project that we opened up in VS Code. So go ahead and drag all of the files over to the uploader. Once all of your files have uploaded, go ahead and type a commit message. I like to do first commit or initial commit for the first upload that I've done. And if you change any files later, you'll type a new message basically describing the new thing that you did. Once everything is processed, you'll see all of the files in your project and a little bit of information about the theme that you used. The last thing to do is to get our website online. So go up to the top right and click the settings. There's a lot of settings here, but the one that we're gonna look for is the GitHub pages section. Once you find that, change the none option to the master branch. When you refresh the page, it'll give you a URL for your website. There's also a place to add a custom domain if you have one. So I went ahead and opened that URL in a new tab and there's the site. Sometimes the site won't show up instantly. So if you're not seeing anything yet or you're getting a 404 error, don't worry, check back in 30 minutes to an hour and it should be there. Thank you for watching this tutorial guys. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. I'll also leave the link to this site and the link to the GitHub repository so you can take a look at that. Go ahead and try this out. Let me know what you think. This is the first tutorial that I've ever really done, so there's definitely room for improvement. So let me know how I can make these better or if there's anything you liked or didn't like about it. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos. I'm going to try to upload weekly. There will probably be some more tech videos in the future, some makeup, beauty, fashion, all kinds of good stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you later.